Welcome to UC Star Astrology's. I'm your host, Cindy. This is the astro astrology forecast for Capricorn, January 2016. I will start with Uranus, which is 16 degrees within constellation Aries, sitting in your fourth house that has to do with your home, your family, your mother, and your car. <laughs> so here, Uranus tends to be very erratic in how it is nurturing, how you are nurturing your family. There is this coming and going, being there, nurturing, and then running away. It, it is possible that um, you're um, not really emotionally involved, but because you're um, your emotions are elsewhere. Perhaps you have um, a long distance relationship and you're running out of the country or out of the city to go visit this person and therefore um, your children or your family are, um, are not being nurtured as well as they should because your emotions are going elsewhere so it's like your emotions are there and then they're not there and it's this erratic behavior um, so if you're going to if you're having an affair or or if you're a um, uh, a mother who is single and or a father who is single then just make sure that you have Someone taking care of them very well, a grandmother, an all pair, someone who is uh, taking care of the children, that they're not being um, shortened from their nurturing, um, that they're not, um, <laughs> I'm thinking in German, nachlässig, <laughs> which I will be doing my astrology in German too. But that um, just make sure that the children are being taken care of during this transit of Uranus in your fourth house. Then I have here Jupiter 23 degrees Virgo and the North Node 24 degrees Virgo sitting in your ninth house. And here it is this over amplified energy of wanting to learn about other cultures, um, higher education, uh, perhaps you're having to go back to school or university and you're pushing yourself just a little too hard that it's hurting your health and um, you're, if you're just studying, studying and not allowing yourself to sleep, overworking yourself, um, taking it is taking a toll on your health or um, in a good sense if your vibrations are pretty good then it could be that you are um, through learning about uh, the different philosophies of the world you're learning how to better your health that is the higher vibration so of this um, if you're into spirituality and things of that sort. Um, here I have in your 10th house moon, 1 degrees Libra and Mars 28 degrees Libra. This is the first two days of January where you can possibly, your, your thoughts and your mind are on your career and on your reputation wanting to expand it and Mars wanting being this go-getter wanting to make it happen for you but you could come across just a little bit too aggressive with your teammates at work it could help it could hurt your reputation so just be careful that you're not coming across emotionally insensitive towards others while you're trying to work yourself up the ladder then we have Venus two degrees in Sagittarius and Saturn 11 degrees Sagittarius in your 12th house. So um, here is the wanting to connect um, with a, a female in a, a far away from where you live. It could um, 
be a, a very um, a spiritual time, this connection with this female. It could be an older person as well. Um, it's, it also could be where you spend a romantic time with your partner. Um, uh, together you go to some resort or a place where you can just be alone together and then and then you start talking about philosophy and that and things of that nature and or or during this time together you um, um, are enlightened of philosophical ideas and and the culture of another land or so. Then there is Sun 10 degrees in Capricorn and Pluto 15 degrees in Capricorn and Mercury 29 degrees in Capricorn within your first house. And so the Sun is is shining on you. Um, this is really good. This is happy birthday. <laughs> and um, this is a, a time to for a, a new a beginning, making a, new plans in your life. Um, um, it is it Mercury and Pluto here. Something transformative is happening. Um, um, or uh, Mercury also has to do with travel and communication so it looks pretty good the Sun because um, Mercury is not too close to the Sun either um, but it, it, it allows you to to um, use your your communication skills um, very deeply because Pluto is here that you go really deep within yourself and communicate during this time um, with authoritative figures and, and you are able to um, better your reputation because you've really um, touched a deepness within them while communicating with them. So then I have Neptune, seven degrees, Pisces, within your third house. It could be here that you're wanting to communicate with your siblings, your younger siblings. And Neptune is a planet that moves very slowly. So you're going through a phase in your life where you're connecting in a deeper way with your siblings, your neighbors, or your cousins. Or... <laughs> Perhaps you're being disillusioned by a by a neighbor, or depending on your natal chart, could be that you're in love with your with your neighbor and you're fantasizing about them. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. Then there is um. Mars going into Scorpio on the 4th within your 11th house. So there's this deepness of secrets with your network circle and how you are gaining money. It's a good time to gain money through your friends and um, your spouse can be blessed or also gaining from government resources while Mars is in here within your 11th house, which is the money house. And yeah, then there is on the 10th, a new moon in Capricorn with, uh, which is your ascendant, which is your, either your moon, your sun, or your rising sign. It's Capricorn, then you are definitely going through a new phase in your life with Sun here um, as well. Um, yes, there's some, your, your, a new way of, 
expressing who you are and your character. Something takes on a different, um, something changes within you and how people see you. And then there is a full moon in Leo um, on the 24th, I believe. That is, um, that is, wait, I think your seventh house. So there's your eighth house. So, yes, correct. Your eighth house has a full moon, so you're um, perhaps. Uh, you are finally receiving money from a, a resource, a government um, um, place, or it's something that's coming to a conclusion here. Um, an ending is, is finally happening that you either you finally get this money that you've been wanting, or it could be a very nice romantic time with your with your partner, so your marriage, marriage, marriage partner, because the eighth house has to do with the marriage, um, and hmm, it it could also be sudden ups and downs within the marriage, and the marriage comes to an ending, or yeah, a relationship comes to an ending. Uh, or a relationship with someone who is scorpion, Scorpio, comes to an ending. It could, it's sudden up, sudden down. So it's it's either the higher interpretation is happening to you or the lower interpretation. And when the lower interpretation is happening to you, then, then you know you need to cleanse and clean up this house, the eighth house and work on it and whatever planets or natal planets you have in there those are the planets that you should try doing the mantras for so that you can raise the energy and um, so whenever any kind of full moon or new moon happens that you're that you're receiving the benefits of it um, because the eighth house is a little malefic but it's spiritual and it's better that if you have good vibrations within this house that it's transformative, but you're not getting a very um, dark lesson through your transformation. That it could be enlightening and beautiful and spiritual and a beautiful um, experience. So... Um, that is the astrology forecast for Capricorn, January 2016. I hope you liked it. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next month. Bye.